Hi, I'm Andrew Berry, and welcome to At The Benches YouTube channel. And we're going to be looking at piercing, cutting out again today. We've already produced a film for YouTube where I showed you the best technique for cutting lovely, perfect straight lines. Now we're going to look at cutting curve lines. Now cutting curve lines sounds quite an easy thing to do. Perhaps you don't think it needs to be as accurate as straight lines and you think pretty much it's going to be quite simple. But there are a few things that you need to know first of all to ensure that you cut nice even graceful curves. The techniques and the principles are basically very very similar to cutting straight lines and also there's a few other things that you can put on your bench that would really help you cut accurately and to stop you snapping blades. Now snapping blades is one of the most common problems that you're going to get when you're trying to wrestle with your piercing saw and trying to cut curves. If you don't think about how the saw blade is positioned in relation to the metal. Let me show you what I mean. Most of us work on a bench as we've got here and for piercing accurately and for the majority, 99% of your work at the bench, it is done here. This is your bench peg. This to me is the center of my universe. This is the center and everything else radiates around it. Very strange Andrew. <laughs> so what you need to know is a bench peg comes out obviously from the bench. A lot of them will come out at an angle. This comes out sloped and it's sloping towards me. Now this is no good really when it comes to cutting curves because if the metal is angled to you this way and you're trying to saw in this direction and perhaps trying to turn the metal or turning your blade around, the metal is always at a funny angle and you in inevitably snap blades if you try and force it. Plus, because the metal is at a slight angle towards you, you don't get an even cut front to back. So say you wanted to cut a pair of earrings that were identical, that were very similar, but you wanted one one way and then one the opposite way. So perhaps they were opposites and you wanted to glue them together. Fantastic idea, but if you try to cut those out on a sloping bench peg as we've got here, the piece that is underneath that is touching the bench peg is going to be smaller than the top one. Because don't forget, you're cutting the metals at this angle and you're cutting vertically. So perhaps you're cutting along the line or just outside the line on the top. But because the metal's at an angle, the next piece is going to be smaller. So we need to make a slight alteration first to our peg. But if your peg is already coming out completely parallel to the ground, straight at you, brilliant, that's fantastic. You don't need to make any other alterations. You can buy uh, from my good friend uh, Lee Marshall, the New Concepts uh, Metal Bench Pin. This is brilliant because it is at 90 degrees, but you need to have the GRS dovetail plate that is fastened onto your bench for this to log onto, locate onto. But if you don't have one of those, you can always buy, always buy again, the New Concepts bench clamp with that little dovetail plate in places we've got there. And that would very simply clamp onto your bench. And then the bench peg would just simply clamp onto that. And you've got this lovely level, perfect surface. And this is ideal for piercing because we have all the little areas, little cutouts here that really helps support your metal. But in my instance, I can't use that. Why? Because I have got this tray and it's within about an inch of my semicircular cutout. So this does not go in all the way. So I am stuck with this particular type of bench. So what I'm gonna have to do is remove my bench peg and simply turn my bench peg the other way around. Luckily, I've simply got two screws that's underneath my peg here and I can simply unscrew these and turn my peg over so it is coming at me completely straight and not sloping. Take that off, turn these around 
and simply screw this back. As you can see, I've used this a few times this way up. Make sure it's nice and securely screwed up to your bench. A lot of people have those little bits of plywood that are clamped with a G-cramp as well onto the bench, and that's just as good. As long as your peg comes out straight, it's gotta be completely parallel to the ground. That will enable you to, to produce lovely, graceful curves every single time. I'm just gonna cut off this little section of brass by here a moment, just so that the fact that I can work with this small piece. Now, you notice that my saw is facing forwards, is slightly angled forwards. That is the best position to cut straight lines when it comes to cutting straight lines. But when you come to pierce, the saw cannot be facing forwards because again, as you're sawing, and perhaps you want to turn a corner, when you want to turn the saw or turn the metal, because the blade is at an angle, because it would be because it's facing this way, it's going to catch, it's going to drag, and it's going to snap. There is no question about that. It will snap without a problem. So all the piercing saw cuts that you need to do on a curve with the saw has to be at 90 degrees to the peg every single time. Don't try and do this. It's never going to work. The saw is going to jam. You're going to end up with irregular cuts and snap blades. Also make sure that you're sitting. Now I'm a little bit high. My stool, unfortunately, let me have a feel. Yeah, my stool does not go any lower than this, but ideally I need to be slightly lower than where I am now. The ideal position, think about this now when you come to Pierce and work at your bench. If you put your forearm, it's not your forearm, this is your forearm, put your forearm on the bench and this part between your shoulder and your elbow should be parallel to the ground. As it is, my shoulders are higher. In theory, I should be a little bit lower. I should be down to this sort of height here. Not sat up, but more down this. So this arm here is parallel to the ground. My shoulder has to be in the same plane as my elbow. So this would, is the best position to be at because you are right looking at the bench peg. Me, my stool's a little bit higher. Unfortunately, I don't spend all day up here, so it's not too bad. But downstairs, our benches are a little bit higher. My seat's a bit lower. Anyway, let's have a quick chat about this now. I've got a little template. I'm just going to draw some really wild and wacky sort of tribal curves that I've got here. I'm just going to draw out, rather than just draw random curves, let me just quickly draw out a real simple design that we've got on here now. What can I do literally in 10 minutes? Let's do this design here and let's put that right close into the corner as well. All right then. So I'm just going to cut out this design, hopefully I can do this within my short space of time. And all oh, goodness me, all these curves. Oh gosh, have I chosen the best thing? I'm not quite sure. All right, so this is my design that I'm gonna be cutting out. You can just about see it in here. Every single line is a curve. Right, lubrication is essential. Again, when it comes to curves, it obviously helps the blade to move smoother. Two things you can do. You can either get a piece of candle wax, a piece of candle or some cut lube and put that directly onto your piece as we've got there. So as you're cutting, the wax is being taken into the saw cut which lubricates the blade or you can run the blade through the cut lube or whatever you use to make it nice and smooth so it doesn't bind. Any saw will do. An old saw like this, which is my lovely fixed frame one that I've had since I've been in university, that will do. The new concept saws, that will do. It does not matter when it comes to curved lines. It just depends on how the saw feels in your hand. Let's put my visor on for this. All right, so curved lines. I should be sat a little bit lower. This bench peg, straight out from the bench at me. 
you've got two choices. You can either, as you're sawing, keep the saw upright and turn into the curve, or if you, you, you're quite clever and you can keep hold of the, of the metal, you can turn the metal into the direction of the blade so you're always cutting forwards. It's entirely up to you, it does not matter. Uh, what else can I tell you about cutting curves? Um, hmm, that's about it. Just a general light. No need to hold this tight. I don't want to see all your knuckles going white where you're grasping onto the saw. It's got to be loose. It's got to be up and down. It's got to be gradual. The teeth run from here to here. So you need to have a full motion, a full stroke of the blade every single time. Not much point trying to do this because the, the, the saw cuts are short, your curves are not going to be lovely and graceful. They're going to be, uh, 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 they're going to be scaggy, they're going to be bitty and they're not good at all. Also what you'll find, there'll be a direction that you like to, to saw as well. I'm right-handed, so turning the saw in this direction anti-clockwise is great for me. If you're left-handed, we're well then cutting in a clock motion, clockwise motion would be suitable for you as well. So that is important when it comes to perhaps working on a design and you find in which way is the best way to cut around a design. I would cut this in a anti-clockwise direction and you'll see that in a minute. That'll be easier for me. Cut on the waist side, always cut on the waist side so you can see your marked line once you have cut out the piece. You know then how far to file down to. Pretty much the same as what it was when we were cutting straight lines. Keep the saw upright in a loose grip. Remember, the teeth will only cut on a downward stroke in theory. Downward stroke, gentle motion up and down, a little bit more force when you're cutting forward, relax it as it comes up, push forward slightly when it comes down, relax when it comes up, and you'll hear it'll be as we go along. I know, people think I'm mad. All right, let me just quickly show you how we're gonna cut this out. Make sure your peg is nice and clean. Any bits of lemel that are stuck, bits of grit that's stuck on your peg here will damage the underside of your, of your metal. So I'd always protect the underneath side of my metal for as long as possible. Okay, so I'm just gonna start on the outside of my curve here. Okay, so it's cutting, not cutting. Cutting, not cutting. Always make sure that you blow your lemel your way. And here we go. Gentle strokes, every time, gentle. I'm turning the metal into the saw. So my saw at the moment is always facing forwards. Make sure, not like then, that you hold the metal down, because if you don't, it's gonna come up and you're gonna snap a blade. Tight curve coming up. Fingers through. Ease up a little bit if you're cutting tight corners. And around. Always come at this sort of area. Don't cut down here. Make sure you come right up to. Just looking at my design I got here, right, okay. Okay, snapped a blade because I wasn't holding the metal down. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna replace the blade. Don't try and put the blade back in where you have just started. Exactly as I mentioned on the cutting a straight line, the teeth are slightly splayed. Okay, the teeth are slightly splayed. You want to put the blade in where you started your cut. A bit of lubrication on the blade for this. I started down here, so just gently put the blade in and just take the blade around. You can see it's, it's, it's cutting because the teeth are slightly splayed out. Okay, that's the best way to do it. Come right round, come right round to here. There we go, okay. Tight corner. A 
Okay, we have very tight coils. So what I'd suggest you do here is put the blade up and down with no forward motion. Turn the metal gently, but keep the blade going up and down. Keep the metal turning, keep the metal turning, keep the metal turning, and now I can carry on. Full length of that blade. into quite a little tighter area here. Okay, here we go, quite a 90 degree turn. Okay, my blade is going up and down, up and down, up and down. It's not going forward, but I'm just gently turning the metal, turning the metal, and the edge of the teeth are actually cutting the metal in the direction that I want to start. This wax is causing me a problem because the wax is making the lemmel stick. Let's carry on, round, Round to here, okay, sharp direction. Again, blade up and down, not pointing forwards. Keep that metal downwards. Here we go. Around. Sharp little area. There we go. If the blade at some stage gets stuck and you, and you can't move, just let go of the metal and it'll spring back to where it needs to be. Once it's where it is, put it back down, carry on cutting. Don't try and force. You try and force, and you're gonna snap a blade. Coming round to the end, you gotta take good care by here. Gently, 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 gently. There we go. Take the blade away. And that's what we have got literally within five, six minutes of cutting out that gorgeous, unusual, tribal sort of pattern. Lots of hints and tips for you to try and remember there. Obviously we need to go over the outside of this with a file now. The thickness of the saw blade again really is an important choice. Again, exactly the same as we had with the uh, piercing the straight line, three teeth are ideally needed to be in contact with the metal at all time. These blades were just that little bit coarse. As you can see, it was making the metal chatter. They were a little bit thick. Perhaps I should have chosen a slightly thinner blade. You can't get away like I showed you with the straight lines by aiming the blade forward so there are more teeth in contact with the metal because the blade has to stay upright. You cannot cheat that way. So it is important to get the right size blade for the teeth. Three teeth need to be in contact with the metal at all times. Then you'll get far more accurate results and the metal will not chatter as bad as what it was doing just then. But as you can see, all these things, lower seat preferably, vertical saw, bench peg coming out, cutting at 90 degrees to the surface. And if that was a double sheet and I'd had two pieces of metal stuck together, cutting out on a peg that was coming out at parallel to the floor, the top piece would be identical to the bottom piece, providing your saw is completely upright this way and is completely upright that way. Loads of tips for you to try and remember, but try and do every single one of those hints and tips and you'll make sure that your curves, your curved lines, will be lovely, graceful and smooth. 
It's not going to be easy. It's going to take lots and lots of practice to get some scrap pieces of brass like I've got here or scrap pieces of copper and just practice curves, wiggly lines, graceful curves, circles, and you'll soon be producing quality, quality piercing. My name is Andrew Berry for At The Bench's YouTube channel. Don't forget, if you haven't subscribed already, please, I'd love you to subscribe. Also, if you have anything that you want to have a chat with me about, you're more than welcome to pop them in the comment section down below. And please subscribe. Please share this with your friends as well. If there's anybody out there who is learning their, their jewellery techniques and piercing is a really important technique to learn right from the start and everything else from there, apart from soldering, is child's play. Thanks for watching. See you on the next film. Bye-bye.